I spent money on AI to figure out which one is the smartest and which one you should be using in your application. Now, Gemini, Claude, GPT, you've probably heard of the hype, of course, but in a real life scenario, say for summarization or for just even making smart decisions, which one's best? So I did what any backend nerd would do, of course, and I built a head-to-head -head tournament inside Xano. We have three models, four support tickets, and our six tasks we'll be putting them up against. Three simple and three complex. We scored each model on how fast they were, how much they cost, and most importantly, well, the accuracy of their answer. And I'll be real with you, the model that's the best is kind of surprising. Now, that's the question. Which AI model is the smartest, actually? I'll break it down for you inside Xano here, the results, and exactly which model you should use when. So let's go ahead and get started. So getting started here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our first contender, Claude Sonnet 4 from Anthropic. Excellent at reasoning, less flashy, more accurate. Um, it's going to be expensive, but it's going to do its job well followed by Google's Gemini 2.5. It's going to be fast. It's going to be lightweight, but also a reasoning model. So when we compare these reasoning models side by side, it'll be pretty interesting to see which one does the best. Unlike our third and arguably most popular contender, that's going to be GPT 4.1 from OpenAI, this is not a reasoning model. It's a completion model. So when we compare the reasoning versus the completion, it'll be pretty interesting to see how they line up against all of the tasks that we're assigning. Reasoning models are good at thinking. They take a little bit longer to actually process because they use chain of thought. They analyze, they think, and they conclude. They're good for analytical thinking. They're good for connecting the dots. And they're good, honestly, for things that are going to be typically systemic or multi-staged versus a completion model, which is going to use semantic similarity. You can see it turns out processing time a lot faster. As you can see with completion models, they're a lot faster. It's going to operate off that semantic similarity, so it's not going to think. It's just going to find the next predictive output. Now, we're dealing with something that's really good at straightforward tasks, though. It's great at pattern matching, and it's pretty cost-efficient for basic operations. So what does this look like in the context of the tasks that we have? Let's hop inside Xano, and we'll actually head to our demo questions. We have three simple and three complex. Now, the, the simple ones are going to be like priority level assignment. One through 10, how urgent? Support turn count, so many messages back and forth between, say, a customer service representative and the actual user. And customer satisfaction prediction for the third simple task. And that's simply just, as the customer satisfied, do we think? Are they neutral? Are they dissatisfied? And the, the more complex, the, the more like, hey, this is going to take thought. This is going to take some time, like insights, like synthesizing insights from tickets and trying to figure out how we can make the process better. Predictive models from these tickets. Can we go ahead and actually prevent this from happening in the future? And then for each ticket, we're also going to be taking a look at cascading effects across the business, such as revenue impacts, how it impacts uh, processes and operations and customer relationships. So here are our six questions. Three simple and three complex. Now, we are going to be using these four support tickets. Each ticket is going to be assigned to a model or an agent. Each ticket here will be processed through those six tasks. At the end of that, those tasks will be summed up. We're going to use a special weight where we go ahead and assign an accuracy score, but we'll also be combining this with a score for speed and cost to determine which model is actually the best. Now. Of course, let's take a quick look at these models to see what we're dealing with. I have three agents, our Gemini, our ChatGPT, and our Clot. All of these agents are going to be essentially the same. Our prompts are a user prompt, and then for our system prompt, we have a combination of a hard-coded value, the model ID, mixed with then the dynamic system prompt we can pass in. The system prompt is going to be those tasks that we just went over. This is going to be all of the ticket data and other pieces of information. Each model is going to have access to four tools. It's going to be able to create a record. It's going to be able to go ahead and calculate its cost. And uh, this is going to be another test of intelligence. Can it use all of the tools correctly? The biggest real difference between how these models are set up is simply in the thinking configuration. And this is only in our reasoning models here. That is Gemini and Claude. Gemini here is going to accept an object. We've set the thinking budget to be 1,024 tokens. You can see here, though, we can either turn the thinking off by setting a thinking budget of zero, or if we set it to negative one, it would mean that it can run as many times as it needs to to eventually get to that conclusion. 
Otherwise, we're setting 1024 here. We'll go ahead and remove these values so it's a valid JSON object, and we'll go ahead and save it. Now, of course, our GPT has no thinking budget, so we haven't done anything between that. But with these two reasoning models and our one completion model, what does that data look like? So to get started here, we're going to start with our first customer satisfaction prediction. This is the simple task. Predict the customer satisfaction. We can see the average response time and average cost. Gemini is going to take the longest. 4.1 is going to be the quickest. And we can see the average cost, actually. Gemini is going to be the cheapest. And our scatter plot helps us visualize this, of course. But if we scroll down a little bit, we actually get to see the results. 4.1 is going to take the cake here. And it's going to have the best confidence score. So it answered the question actually the best. Not only that, but the fastest and the cheapest considering. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see the actual rationale and reasoning for why it arrived at this score. We can go ahead and then switch it to our second example. This is going to be counting the number of back and forths between tickets. So a customer service agent and say the actual customer, how many messages back and forth? Here's our average response time, our average cost. Interesting to see here that Gemini is a lot cheaper. It's going to be as taking as long as our other reasoning model, the Sonic 4, but GPT 4.1 consistently the fastest and the cheapest it looks like. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If we scroll down, Gemini Flash 2.5 actually wins because GPT 4.1 didn't answer a single question correctly. It might be cheap and it might be fast, but it does not count well. We were telling ChatGPT to count the turns and, well, it got an accuracy of 0%. We can see here achieving a 0% accuracy across all four support tickets. So, for what's the most cost effective and the best at being able to rationalize or reason to count, it'll be Gemini Flash 2.5. Our last simple task, priority level assignment, calculating just how urgent a particular task is. So taking a look at our average response time and average cost, Claude is going to take the longest and be the most expensive. Of course, that's kind of what we expect, but we can see an anomaly here from Gemini kind of interesting how it uh, is hat kind of interesting how again it has a response time so far out but if we scroll down we can see here that the winner is gpt 4.1 sonnet actually did not answer the best on this it was determined that gpt 4.1 and gemini flash 2.5 actually had a tied score for best answered and then when you factor in of course speed and time well 4.1 wins now, for our first complex, the multivariable assessment, how does this particular ticket impact business operations, customer relations, and more? So we gave this task to the agents. We can see here our average response time and average cost. We can see here for the first time in our scatter plot that our models are actually pretty grouped tightly. Of course, for an odd anomaly here for our Sonnet 4, which, well, it's um, it took a while. It took a long time to think. It was the most expensive and it took the longest. We have the most expensive being Gemini and the fastest being ChatGPT. We can see here that the confidence scores or the accuracy are going to paint a different picture. The best takeaway is going to be Gemini Flash 2.5. See, 4.1, a bad score. Sonnet 4, the best score. Right in the middle due to time and due to cost. Well, if we factor in everything here, Gemini Flash 2.5 is going to be the best. Objectively, though, Clyde Sonnet 4 will give you the best, most accurate answer. So it depends here. And these kinds of tasks, are we looking for accuracy or are we looking for speed and cost? If we don't care about speed and cost, Claude's the best at being able to determine how these impacts are going to cascade through the business. For the next task, it's going to be predictive modeling for the ticket escalation process. We're taking a look at early warning indicators. We're taking a look at technical complexity, uh, resource availability. We're designing a system or an escalation decision tree that adapts based on real factors. So we have given this here to these models. We can see here down below the response times, the cost, and of course, the scatter plot. For the first time, we've seen Gemini be consistently slower than Claude Sonnet 4. Of course, GPT 4.1 being the fastest and the cheapest. So which model actually did the best? When we factor in the accuracy and the cost and the response, we can see that ChatGPT 4.1 actually takes the cake here, which is pretty interesting because it's not a thinking model. We can see here that the score it tied with Gemini 2.5, a score of 8. When we factor this in with the cost and how fast it was, GPT 4.1 is going to win. But objectively, 
Cloud Sonnet 4 is going to provide the best, most accurate answer. So if you are looking for the most accurate answer, yet again, Cloud Sonnet 4 is going to do what you need to do. Now, lastly, we have systemic process optimization. So synthesizing insights from tickets to identify how we can improve our processes. We're going to analyze. We're going to identify knowledge gaps. We'll be doing things to ultimately come up with, well, a way to make the process better. We can scroll down and we'll see here Gemini and Claude taking the longest. No surprise to us that GPT 4.1 is the cheapest and the fastest. And we'll scroll down and again, interestingly enough, GPT 4.1. Gemini did not do that great at all. A score of seven. So it was fast. It was lightweight, but it didn't do that great of thinking. GPT's 4.1 completion model was able to output information that aligned more closely with the actual task. And again, Claude Sonnet 4 has the most objectively accurate answer. So when we compare what we're looking at, GPT 4.1 actually walks away a lot of the time being the best. But is it really? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. It's not great at counting. It's going to be, well, based off predictions. So not necessarily actual data that you have, just based off its own training data, what token comes next. Versus reasoning models, which can actually take your data and then think and multi-step processes. So my main takeaway from this is that if you are uncertain of which model to use, Gemini's Flash 2.5 is actually going to be pretty solid. We saw that it oftentimes landed right in the middle, even took the winner's crown a couple times. Flash 2.5 seems to be the solid middle ground for being able to quickly think and quickly output. My main takeaway here is if you're completely unsure of what to use, Gemini Flash 2.5 is going to be a great model. It's quick, it's fast, and it helps think. If you're looking for just quick and fast and you don't want any reasoning and you're not counting anything, I think 4.1 is an awesome choice. And if you're looking for something that is, well, objectively accurate, Sonnet 4 is going to be the best. Now, this tells us a lot, but it's not going to be the whole story. It's also going to be dependent on what you're building, how you're building, and the resources you have to work with. Also, keep in mind, some reasoning models don't support the option to also call tools. So if you're building an agent and you want to call tools with a particular model, that might not work. So we urge you to go ahead and test with your own data to get a clear picture of what to expect. Now, it's also important to note that some models also will be fluctuating in costs. We can't offer specifics about it in this video because this information can change at any time, but we will put some quick links down below the documentation for the models that you're interested in and the description so that you can take a look for your reference. So Gemini Flash 2.5, I personally think is an awesome middle of the road model. Again, if you're completely undecided what to use. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave those within the section below. You can also reach out to us within your instance by clicking the support icon. And of course, always post on the community where ourselves and other community members are there to help. Also, if you have any videos that you want to see us do, go ahead and leave some suggestions in the comments below and we'll be sure to get to them. Can't wait to see what you build with these agents using these models. And of course, happy building.